Now we're going to explore a little coding example of how to save objects inside of a transaction. Now, we have a, the same model that we've been using, my first model. Um, I've added another table to it, product. Now the product is essentially just the name, a product ID, and an in stock integer. So we have an integer of in stock, a varcar 50 for the name, and a database identity uh, primary key. That's an integer. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to add a customer and a product at the same time inside of the same transaction. So we have this particular model, so we'll just generate it. And build. Okay. Now we're going to open up a console application. Now, the, we explored last time how to actually create an object. And we could create two separate objects, a product and a customer, and they would both be saved in, inside of two separate transactions. However, we don't want to do that here. This is the traditional way that we would do it. We would create a product collection, set the product name in stock, add it back to the product collection, and persist. Anytime you call a persist on a collection or on a specific object, it is inside of a transaction. Every object in collection is inside of an implicit subdomain. A subdomain is a container that contains all objects, uh, it contains a group of objects inside of it. You can add as many objects as you wish into it. They can be of different types of products, of customers, customer types, etc. So, since this is an implied subdomain, how do we actually get other objects into it? Because when I create this, there's a subdomain that contains this, and when I save it, that subdomain is saved. When I create a new customer collection, there is a different subdomain in memory. When I persist it, that one is saved inside of a transaction. So I want to merge these into one transaction. Well, the way I have to do it is I have to get a handle to this subdomain and make sure that I'm pulling the customer collection out of there. Now, I've already written that code, so you don't have to watch me type it. So I'm just going to delete this, paste the new code, and essentially it looks very similar. So I, I create a project collection, I add a new item, uh, project, product 1, items in stock 10, and I add the item. Now I do not persist it yet. Now this is all in memory, that object exists inside of the collection, but I do not want to persist it. What I want to do now is get a customer collection out of the same subdomain. So what I do is I declare a customer collection and I say set that equal to the prod the product collection subdomain because every collection points has a pointer to its uh, subdomain and instead of there uh, there is a enumeration that enumerates all the collections inside of my uh, that my subdomain can contain so I just say give me the customer collection and cast it back because they're all uh, as they're all interfaces so it casts it back as a customer collection. Now, now this customer collection is inside of the same subdomain as this customer collection or product collection. So now when I create the object, set the first name, last name, customer type, and add it back, all I have to do now is save any, either one of those uh, collections. So if I, can, if I call customer collection not persist, what's actually happening in the background is it's persisting the entire subdomain. So I could just as easily have said product collection persist. Or, for better readability, maybe you just want to do the subdomain so that the next developer can actually see, oh, he's not actually saving the collection, he's actually saving the entire subdomain, subdomain.persist. All three of these are equivalent. It's the exact same code being executed in the background. The beauty of this functionality is that it allows you to add any number of objects of any type of object that the uh, the data access layer actually supports into that subdomain and you can save all of them at one time the entire transaction will either succeed or fail this is very useful when you're adding a, uh, a lot of stuff at one time like a bunch of customers and their orders and their expiration dates and uh, all the products that are going to be associated with you can set all that up in memory and call one persist and it will either succeed or fail so you will not have orphans scattered throughout your database